Hi, welcome to Stream Developers. In this video, I would like us to experiment with Kesa to build a feature-rich SwiftUI chat messaging application using Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and with the chat functionality powered by Stream's iOS chat SDK. I will show you how to set up the Kesa AI code editor to read from this blog post. To build this SwiftUI chat messaging application supporting offline mode, incoming and outgoing messages, reactions, threads and replies, media attachments like documents, files, videos and images, and more. So you may ask, why should we use Kesa to build a SwiftUI chat messaging application? Kesa provides one of the best user experiences to code with an AI. It can help you to build apps quickly using large language AI models in ways no AI code editor can do. Kesa also has intuitive auto-completion, files and code generation, and more. Let's look at the final project we will build in this tutorial. Although you can configure and run an iOS simulator in Kesa, I find it much easier to do the code generation in Kesa and also use Xcode to run the actual application and do the necessary configurations. So let's launch Xcode and run the app. You can see from the toolbar, I have iPhone 16 Pro selected as the device to run the app on. So let's click this button to run the app. When you run the app, you are presented with a list of channels as the first screen that shows up. We can tap any of the channel list items to go to the messages list. So here we have both incoming and outgoing messages. We can use the message composer to send a new message. We can react to messages using tap and hold gesture. When we tap and hold a message, we can start thread reply, pin a message to conversation and more. On the left side of the composer, you can tap the lightning icon to use instant commands like Jiffy commands. You can mute and unmute users. Using the paperclip icon, you can send documents, files, images, and videos. So this is what we are going to build quickly in Kesa. You can get this project from this GitHub repository, Stream Tutorial Projects, by going to the folder iOS Swift UI. I created the app as Kesa Swift UI WhatsApp clone, so you can click this folder and grab the Xcode project from here. I encourage you to get it from this repo and try it yourself. So in this project, we will start by creating a new SwiftUI project in Xcode. Then we set privacies for camera and photos library usage. We will also install the StreamChat iOS SDK in the SwiftUI app. Then we will open the newly created SwiftUI application in Kesa and start adding prompts to build our functioning chat messaging application. Whenever you use Kesa for code generation, things may go wrong, so I will show you how to fix errors in the chat messaging application. Finally, we will run and test the app as we did previously. So let's get started. Let's launch Xcode again and create a new project by going to File, New, and selecting Project. Let's leave the application as App and click Next. Let's give it this name, Kesa Swift UI Watts. If we leave it this way, Xcode will append app at the end of the main project file. So let's remove the app. We leave the interface as Swift UI and the language as Swift and click Next. Then we save it in a location. As I showed previously in the final project, the app allows users to attach files, images, documents, and videos. To make this possible on iOS, we need to set privacies for camera and photos library usage. So let's select the root folder of the project and move to the info tab. Let's move the mouse cursor here. You can see there is a plus icon. When we hover on each of the key items, let's click the plus icon to add a new key. I will scroll to the privacy section and add a new privacy for camera. Over here, we select this one, camera usage description. Each privacy has key and value. With the value section, we will leave it empty so that we get a default string from the system. Let's click the plus icon again and add a new privacy for photos usage. So once again, I will scroll to the privacy section and select photos library usage description. I will also leave the value field empty. 
So we are doing these configurations in Xcode to make things easier so that we generate only the code in Kesa for the chat messaging application. We have now configured camera and photos library privacies. Our next step is to install the Stream Swift UI Chat SDK. So in the Xcode project, I will go to File, Add Package Dependencies. With the search on the top right of the window, I will paste this URL. You can obtain this link from the iOS chat tutorial on our website. I will also add a link to the description of the video. What we are doing here is to fetch the Swift UI Chat SDK from GitHub. So we leave the dependency rule as up to next major version and click Add Package. Then we need to wait for some time. Let's click Add Package again. So you can now see under Package Dependencies, we have two folders, Stream Chat and Stream Chat Swift UI. Stream Chat is the core iOS SDK. You can use only Stream Chat. If you want to build a fully custom iOS chat experience, you can read more about the core Stream Chat SDK in our documentation. I will add a link to the description of the video. Next, we have Stream Chat Swift UI. This provides reusable Swift UI components like channel lists, channels, reactions, message lists, message composer, and more. So we have now done all the necessary configuration in Xcode. We set up privacy for camera and photos library usage. We have also installed the Swift UI Chat SDK. We can now open the Swift UI project in Kesa and use it to do the code generation. First, you should make sure you have Kesa installed by going to kesa.com and clicking download for free. I have it already installed, so I'm going to launch it. I will press Ctrl and click the Kesa icon and choose the option New Window. With this option, open a folder. I'm going to open the newly created Xcode project. So if I go to the Files Explorer, you can see we have the content view and the root file of the app. As I explained earlier, you can see Xcode appended app to the project's name. So we have Kesa Swift UI WhatsApp.swift. From the code editor, you can see we have a nice syntax highlighting. In order to get a syntax highlighting in Kesa, you need to install the Swift extension. You can click the extension button and search for Swift. So the Swift extension here provides Swift support in Kesa and VS Code. Once you create a project in Kesa, you can use AI Chat or the Composer in Kesa to generate your code. To bring AI Chat, you can press Command L. That is what is shown on the right. So this is useful if you want to work with a single file. In our case, we want to generate multiple files. So we are not going to use the AI Chat. I will click here to cancel it. To generate multiple files for the project, you should press Command I to bring the composer. Whether you use the AI chat or the composer in Kesa, you can use the add symbol to reference files, folders, code, web, docs, and more. Let's press the add symbol. You can see here we can reference all the following in the composer. In our case, we are interested in adding a URL so that Kesa can read from a written tutorial to generate the necessary files for this project. In this case, you can select web or docs. I'm going to select docs. What you see here are the docs I added previously. You can also add a new one by clicking add new doc. Let's bring the browser again and go to the stream website. We are going to add this URL and press enter. Let's name it Swift UI Chat Demo and click confirm. You can now see in the composer, we are now referencing the URL we just added. That has also been added to Docs in Kesa. To confirm that, you should click the gear icon to open Kesa settings. Then you come to the features section and scroll down. Under Docs, you can see these are the previous ones I added. And this is the one we just added. Those I added previously have been indexed. With the one we just added, you can see we don't have any label as indexed. The URL we added now is also the same as this one. We have now done all the necessary configurations in Kesa. We have the Swift extension for syntax highlighting. We also added URL of the docs and indexed it so that Kesa can read from the online tutorial for the code generation. Let's go ahead to do the code generation by using this prompt. So this is the same URL we just added in Kesa. That is the online Swift UI chat tutorial. Let's go back to the prompt again. You have noticed here I stated in this Swift UI app, that is the app we created in Xcode. I have already set the necessary privacies for the iOS startup. 
Those are the camera and photos library privacies we set earlier in Xcode. Next, I would like you to configure the iOS Swift UI chat SDK using this tutorial. Here, I added the URL again to make it more clear and the codes on the web page to create a fully functioning iOS Swift UI chat messaging app. With the code on the web page, if I go to the tutorial again and scroll down, you can see we have some code snippets and complete code on the web page. So I instructed Kesa to go through this tutorial to generate files for the code on this page. Next, we should instruct Kesa to follow the step-by-step -step tutorial in the URL above to configure the chat SDK and also add the necessary Swift files as described in the tutorial. So in the web tutorial I just showed, to set up the chat SDK, you need to follow some steps. It starts with the client setup, then the presentation of a channel list, and finally, presentation of a chat channel. So here we should be more specific so that the AI model we specify in Kesa can implement the following. The client setup consisting of four steps. If I go back to the tutorial again, over here we have the client setup and it has the first step, the second step, third and the fourth step. So all these steps are those specified here in the prompt. Below the client setup, we have presenting a channel list and presenting a channel. So if we go to the tutorial again, over here we have presenting a channel list and also presenting a channel. Lastly, in the prompt, I added this section. Finally, ignore the theming section of the tutorial. When we scroll further in the tutorial, over here we have theming. Our intention here is to build a fully functioning chat messaging application without any theming of the SDK. So the theming section of the online tutorial will be ignored by the AI model we select in Kesa, that is Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. So let's select everything. You can ignore this part because we have already added it as docs in Kesa. We can also add it. So let's copy everything here. Let's press Command V to paste it. Over here, we have an option to select the AI model we want to use. Previously, I tried GPT-40, but I found Cloud 3.5 Sonnet to be the best. So let's leave it as Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and click Submit. So you can see it has started the file generation and the code generation. So we have different files. When you go to the project navigator, these are the three files we just generated in Kesa. However, you can see they are now in pink, meaning they have an error. The reason is that they were generated outside the root folder of the app. So here we have the root folder. You can see all the three files are just outside. So let's move them inside the root folder. After saving the generated files in Kesa, if we now visit the project in Xcode, you can see we have this error. Main attribute can only apply to one type in a module. This happens because after we created the project in Xcode, we got the file Kesa Swift UI WhatsApp.swift as the main app file. So the Kesa Swift UI WhatsApp.swift file serves as the entry point of the app. Kesa also generated Swift UI chat demo app.swift as the main app file. So in the iOS project, it is not possible to have two files as the entry points of the app. Because as you can see here, the generated file from Kesa also has the main directive. So let's go back to Kesa and add another prompt to fix this error. So we should move the content of Kesa Swift UI chat demo app.swift into Kesa Swift UI WhatsApp app.swift. So here we can add the prompt to move the content of Swift UI chat demo app.swift into Kesa Swift UI WhatsApp app.swift. The prompt I added wasn't able to delete Swift UI chat demo app.swift, so let's go ahead and delete it manually. We have now moved the generator Swift files into the root folder of the app. We have also deleted the unwanted file. Let's visit the project in Xcode. 
and go to product clean build folder to clean the project. Let's look at a summary of the three files we generated in Kesa to configure the chat SDK to build a fully functioning messaging app. In Kesa Swift UI was app.swift. We import StreamChat and StreamChat Swift UI. StreamChat is the core Swift UI SDK and StreamChat Swift UI consists of reusable Swift UI components like the channel list, message list, reactions menu and more. So here we have a struct that conforms to the app protocol, making this file the entry point of the app. So when we launch the app, we create an instance of StreamChat client with the following configurations. Next, we create a state variable to store the StreamChat instance using the chat client. Then we initialize the StreamChat instance and call the connect user function. In order to access the SDK, we need a valid user. So here we create the function connect user and initialize it with a hard coded token and user information such as ID, name, and avatar. To learn more about the user authentication, I encourage you to check the client and authentication section in our documentation. I will add a link to the description of the video. Next, we have custom channel list.swift. This file was generated purposely for state management. So as you can see here, we have two state objects, view model and channel header loader. The view model manages the list of channels and the selected channel, and channel header loader manages the loading of the channel header. So this file is purposely for managing the state of the channel list. Finally, we have custom channel view. In this file, we define the following state variables. Channel info shown, which tracks whether the channel information is currently displayed. Next, we have another state variable, message display info, which stores data about a selected message for displaying details like reactions. Then we have the state object view model that manages the channel state and behavior through an instance of the chat channel view model. In the some view computed property, we wrap the layout in a navigation view. So if a particular channel list is available, we display the message list view and a message composer view for sending a new message and also editing a message. So that is a summary of the files that configures the Swift UI chat SDK to build a fully functioning chat messaging application. For a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up the iOS chat SDK, I encourage you to check the written tutorial we referenced in Kesa. Let's use the simulated iPhone 16 Pro to run the app. Once we run the app, we are presented with a channel list. We can scroll through the list of channels and go to the messages list to send a message. Once you send a message, we can react to it using reactions. We can also delete a message and also use thread replies. Also, if we go to the messages list, we can attach files, documents, audio, and video. We have now covered everything in building an iOS chat messaging application in Kesa using Swift UI and the Streams iOS chat SDK. You have seen how easy it is to set up Kesa and use its composer for files and code generation for any project you want to work on. By reading an online article or documentation, you can use all the steps we covered in this tutorial to build a chat messaging application in Kesa using our other chat SDKs like React, React Native, Android, Flutter, and Angular. Thank you for taking time to watch this video to the end.